Um, thank you very much for joining us. If you're um, joining us live this morning, uh, good morning to you. Uh, and if you are uh, watching the recording of this later on, good afternoon to you, good evening to you, uh, wherever you are. Um, this session is being recorded, so uh, it will be available for anybody to watch at, at any point. Um, and just for those people that are joining us live, our Zoom protocols um, are always to have your camera off and to have your microphone off as well. Um, there will be the opportunity for you to ask questions. For that, you need to use the chat function. So just on your Zoom, look for the speech bubble, which shows where the chat is. If you click on that, the chat box will come up on the right-hand side. And you can ask uh, any questions that you want uh, by using that box. We're essentially going to do our presentation, and then we will answer any questions that you have got at the end. Well, we'll get started um, to talk about uh, the reopening of the school. I just want to say a massive thank you to all of our parents um, for their support over the last couple of months. Um, we have got 98% of our parents now that receive the weekly Google updates um, via email, and, and that's fantastic. So you know exactly where your child is at when it comes to um, the work that we've been setting them, and that means that you're supporting them. And we know that we've got a massive level of support, a massive level of engagement from our students who are working from home. Uh, I also want to say a, a huge thank you for your messages of support, uh, thank you for those people who have volunteered from the community to come and help us in our lateral flow testing station. Um, and it's just, it's been a lovely community effort, everything that we've been doing the last couple of months. So I do want to say a massive thank you for that, really. This webinar this morning is part of a sort of a whole range of information that we are, are sending home to get everybody ready for next week. Um, obviously, we've sent a couple of letters home. Emails have been sent to all the students multiple times. We've sent a couple of tutor PowerPoints so that the students can have a look at those and make sure they're clear on what's happening. And um, we've also sent some videos home as well, um, particularly one about what testing is all about. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so we're trying to use as many methods as possible to get across our messages about what the uh, what is going to happen next week, uh, the week after, and then uh, going further forward from that as well. We are genuinely excited. I can't tell you. Um, how excited we are about getting everybody back into school next week. Um, it is uh, a school is a school because it's a buzzing environment full of children and uh, to have the buildings that are not full of children, um, it doesn't feel right. So we just can't wait, you know, um, and, you know, certainly the classes that I teach, speaking to them, leaving message for them, communicating with them via email. Um, I'm so excited to see them in person. I can't wait to, uh, to be teaching them next week. Um, and of course, the school has been open. It's quite ironic that we're holding a webinar to talk about the school reopening next week. The school hasn't closed. Today, we've got over 200 people on site um, and we have had over uh, 120 students on site many days. We've had more students in than in any other secondary in North Lincolnshire and a higher percentage as well. We're really proud of that. We've worked really hard to get our vulnerable students in school we know that's the right place and the best place for them. So we're really proud that we have had a large number of students in school, but we cannot wait for next week when we get everybody back in. We know that um, those students will be in a different place, your own children. Some of them may well be as excited as I am um, about uh, coming back to school. Others might be nervous, um, especially uh, if they're like me, they've got some dodgy lockdown haircut and they're thinking, oh my God, I don't want anybody to see me when I've got this haircut. Well, we're all in the same boat there. We've got some great haircuts in school at the moment. People have either decided to go long, not cut it at all and, and getting a bit grufty, or they are going really, really short um, and we're getting almost skinheads in school. So it's, it's anything goes here. And the great thing about Bayes Garth and one thing that we do always stress is we don't have any mirrors in school. You can't see yourself. Yep. So we are um, we are a very, very um, inclusive school where, where everybody is accepted and we want everybody here. Um, and we really, I think that's the message and that's the message that we'll leave you with at the end of the session. We want everybody to be back in for next week. So today we're just going to talk about the, um, the reinforced arrangements for returning to school next week, um, explain a little bit about our decisions and why we're taking them and then answer any questions that you've got. Take hopefully about uh, half an hour um, to 45 minutes to do all of that. Um, so we will crack on. So first of all, returning to school for next week then. Um, so you will have seen the instructions that have gone out to your children and to yourselves via the letters. 
Um, we would love to have everybody in on Monday morning. That would be the ultimate goal. But uh, we are limited um, by the fact that children have to be tested first and they have to come back with a negative test before they can go into lessons. Um, therefore, we're limited to the students coming back by the capacity of our lateral flow device testing station. Our hall at the moment is used by that. You probably have seen the video from Mr. Barton by now um, talking about that station and you'll have seen what happens in it. Um, we can test between 50 and 75 people every single hour, which is fantastic. Uh, and that testing station has been up and running now for eight weeks. So we're very, very smooth with, um, with the testing processes. Um, but clearly when we're talking about testing 900 people, uh, 1,000 people if you include staff, we cannot at a capacity of 50 to 75 every hour get everybody in at the same time. We just wouldn't get people tested until the, the third day. Um, and what do you do? If you can't go into lessons, then there's no point being into school. Um, so that's why we put out the staggered start that we have. It is simply because that's the capacity that we've got to test everybody before they're back in lessons. I'm really, really proud of our staff and uh, community volunteers who are running that station. We have 14 staff involved in that. Um, you can imagine that is the vast majority of our admin staff a big proportion of our support staff, um, as well as community volunteers as well. Um, it does mean that for the next couple of weeks, while they're going to be in the hall all the time, we are going to be very short staffed in certain areas of the school. So bear with us if you're trying to get through to reception or if you're emailing uh, for admin support and you're not getting an immediate response, we are going to be really short staffed in certain areas while we get everybody tested. Um, so that's why we've uh, done the arrangements that we have done for those first three days. Everybody will be back in school by next Thursday, and, uh, and that's fantastic. I'm going to hand over to Jade now, who's going to go through those arrangements for the first three days in a little bit more detail. Jade. Thank you. Um, I'm, my job now is to go through the, the kind of detailed arrangements uh, and respond to some of those questions that I've had coming through from students about what do I actually do uh, my first time on site next week. Before I do that, I'm obviously there's been a reference to the tutor PowerPoint. Within the tutor PowerPoint that all of your children would have received, there are um, some wellbeing activities just to prepare them for coming on site next week. Small things like checking equipment, checking our uniform, making sure we found our school shoes. Um, as part of that preparation, um, I would urge parents and students to make sure that we're looking at that kind of today, tomorrow, way in advance of Sunday evening. And if we find that there are any issues, then the tutor team, uh, the senior team, the pastoral team, we are all here all over the weekend to make sure that we can address any of your child's anxieties. So we have three groups of students and I'll take each one in turn with regards to the organisation next week. Our first group of children. So these are the children that have been in school with us um, either as a critical worker or a vulnerable child throughout this lockdown period. If your child is one of these, then on Monday morning, they have already been tested three times. So Monday morning for them is the start of a normal return to their timetable. So when they arrive on site, whether they walk or on the bus, if they have been in school with us as part of our lockdown cohort, they will arrive through the main gates, go through the normal student entrance, and they will go straight to their normal lesson as per their timetable. So the timetable they had before Christmas, it is week B, they go straight to period one. Now we know that students won't, and it's always a thing that they forget their timetables. So every child that was on site yesterday received a, another copy of their timetable. So one thing as a parent you can do to help us is to make sure that you've checked that they've got it and that they've identified week B, period one, and they know where to go. Now, one of the things that we won't have the capacity to do next week is to provide the same level of student support service that we normally do. So if your child isn't sure where they're going, I would really urge you to get them to email their tutor, email myself or Mr Barton before they arrive on site, because they could very well go to student support and be waiting there for a while while we don't have the capacity to deal with inquiries quite as quickly. So we're going to discourage that as much as possible. So if you need a timetable or you're unsure, please reach out over the weekend. So that group of students already been tested three times, you go straight to period one. 
Now, your child may find when they get to period one that they may be the only child in that class or there may be only one other. The groups will be very, very small. And this is intentional on our part. This is part of us welcoming students back and making sure that the first thing we can do is give a really personal welcome to every single student and um, make sure check on their well-being, check on their how they're feeling about coming into school um, before we launch into that academic work. So for the first couple of days, there will be very small classes and this is deliberate. The second group of students that will be arriving on Monday. So in order to test the rest of our student population, we have split the students into those that use public transport, our school buses, and those that use private transport or can walk. And this is just as Mr Briggs has said, so we can minimise the amount of time that students would have just waiting around and not being into lessons. So on Monday, we have our years 10 and 11 joining us. If your child comes on public transport or the bus or the school buses, then they will come onto the school site as normal and they will go through the normal student gate. So they will not go down the side by the art rooms like they have been doing prior to Christmas. They will come through the usual student gate. There will be plenty of staff to welcome them and they will be directed into the grub hub, into one of our dining spaces through an external door. So they're going to come straight through the normal student entrance and into the Grub Hub. When they reach the Grub Hub, there will be a host of staff there ready to register your child, make sure we've got their details. And we will also at that point hand them a new timetable as well. So they've got a copy of their timetable so they know where they'll be heading once they have got the negative ready to proceed into lessons. While your child is waiting for their test, they will stay in the Grub Hub. That will be the waiting area until they are called to have their test. And as you would have seen on the rotors that we've sent out in the letters and in the tutor PowerPoint, um, the order is purely alphabetical. Once your child has had their test, they will be redirected into the back of the school. So they will be directed into Jules, one of our other dining spaces, or to be able to use the mugger or the field at the back. So we will keep completely separate those students that are waiting to be tested and those that have been and that are waiting for their results. Once all of the students have been tested, and we are very hopeful we can do this by about half past 10, we will have a normal tutor time and a normal break time. That means that all children will get to see their tutor. And again, that's important for that relationship and welcoming them back, checking on their mental health, how they're feeling, any anxieties or issues we can help with, break time, and then we will start teaching period three. So we will be going into normal lessons as quickly as possible. So that's our second group of students. Now, if your child walks or they come in private transport, for example, that you bring them in the car, then your child will be coming in in the afternoon for their test and then returning home. So in this case, your child will arrive on site either on car or on foot or on their bike, and they will proceed to the main reception. The student gates will be locked and we will be allowing students entry through the main reception. They need to arrive at the time allocated as dictated by their surname. They do not need to be in uniform, but they will need to have a suitable face covering on. They will join the queue and then they will be taken through to the testing centre. Once they have been tested, they would then exit the building and then return home to wait for their results. On a receival of a negative result, your child will be back with us at half past eight the following morning, ready to go straight through the main student entrance and straight into period one. So we are hoping that everybody from 10 and 11, for example, will be straight into lessons on Tuesday morning. And then as you would have seen from the timetable, the same process is then repeated for year sevens on the Tuesday and our eights and nines on Wednesday. So it is our intention that we would have the whole school back into their lessons, their timetable, normal timetable lessons with their peers, the right teachers in front of them by Thursday morning. I'll hand back to you for lateral flow testing at home. Thank you, Jade. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, um, just put them in the chat box and we will uh, answer them at the end of the session.
So let's talk about the testing itself. I, I think if you haven't had a test um, yet, then um, then that's probably one of the things that's weighing most heavily on the minds of, of our children when they're thinking about coming back into school. Um, myself and Jade have had one this morning. That's what we do uh, twice a week as members of staff. Um, the students, um, as Jade has already said, that are in school today uh, are all queuing up now for their tests. Um, and they will have had more than 20 tests um, by the time everybody else comes back in on, on Monday. Mr. Barton has produced this uh, fantastic video of the testing system and the process and everything else. So uh, my advice is that you sit and watch that with your child before they come back to school and then sort of hopefully answer any questions that they have got about, about the process. One thing you'll notice from that video um, is that they will know the staff that are in that room. Um, they will see Mrs. Woodward, uh, Mrs. Lawson on the registration desk, for example. So it'd be people that they know They'll see the testers are people that they know from the, the main office. Um, there'll be some exam invigilators, which certainly the, uh, the older year groups will know them well. Um, and some community volunteers as well that they might not know as well. But essentially, when they go to test, the people that will be there will be people that know them and that they know. It's our staff and they need to be reassured about that. Of course, it is, uh, it is anxious thinking about a test. Um, when, when you think... Um, about sticking something down your throat, you immediately think about gagging. You immediately think, oh, what, what, what's this going to be like? Am I, am I going to um, feel sick? Um, am I going to be able to do it? What if I hit the wrong point? And all of those things. There are no doubt, there's no doubt that actually that really anxious um, time before you take your first test will be there for every one of our students. Um, I can tell you that the testing, although it's not pleasant, um, it's not that bad. It, it really isn't that bad. We've carried over, well over, we've carried out well over a thousand tests now in school, well over a thousand tests. We've not had anybody be sick. So first of all, the message to the children is you're not going to be sick. Yeah, you might have a little cough or a retch after you, you put the, um, the swab down onto your tonsils. That's normal and that's natural. Uh, and remember you are in an enclosed booth. So this isn't in front of everybody else. It's not embarrassing. Um, you're not gonna be embarrassed in front of your friends. Uh, it's very much a, a private thing. Uh, we've gone to, uh, to great pains to make sure that it is a very private process when you go and take the test. So as I said, um, we've got our most vulnerable students in school at the moment. Some of these have um, complex needs. Uh, they've all undergone more than 20 tests each. So it is something that you do, you get used to. Um, and um, I know from my perspective, um, for my own children, we, we sat down together, we watched a couple of YouTube videos to see what it was like to help identify where in the mouth that they can find their tonsils, what they will do with the swab, how to do it. Um, and they were certainly reassured by that. So I think like with most things in life, the more preparation you do, the, the, the less of a fear it will become. Um, so that was, that's my advice is to watch the video, watch other videos if you need to, talk it through with your child and just reassure them. Yeah, it's not gonna be pleasant, but also it's not that bad. And it's done and dusted in a couple of minutes um, and then they move off and, and, um, and await their result. Um, when they go into the room, they will receive a registration card. It looks, it looks a bit like this. Um, you get a registration card like this and you get a couple of barcodes that go with it like this, okay? They will bring this home with them, okay? Um, you can see that it's got a QR code on the bottom here, okay? So essentially what you do is you take your mobile phone, turn your camera on, and once you've turned your camera on, you just simply put that over the QR reader. That will then link to the website and then it comes up on your phone, the Test and Trace website, okay? And it says, register a coronavirus test, and then you can put those details in, okay? You've got 24 hours after any test is taken to do that. It's a very simple process, as I've demonstrated there, to get to the, the site where you register it, um, only takes a matter of seconds, and it's a very straightforward thing to do. If you're 13 and over, you can get have your own account. Uh, under that, you'll have to register each time you have the test. But it's a straightforward process in terms of that. And what you get then um, is an email and a text, which will tell you the result of your test. Okay, so that's, um, that's the way that that happens. 
Now we will do three of those tests with your children in school. And you've seen on the letter that the program for those three tests, um, they are spread apart. They've got to be between three and five days apart. We spread them apart and they will all be done by Thursday, the 18th of March. On Friday, the 19th of March, our testing center will then be dismantled because then the onus shifts to you as parents to support your child by carrying out um, their tests at home from that point onwards. So on Friday the 19th of March, we expect um, that you will greet your child when they come home from school and they will have one of these with them. This is the self-test kit, okay? Uh, inside the kit, you will see it contains a box which contains loads and loads of all the information that you need and all the equipment that you need to carry out these tests at home. Inside the box, there are seven tests. Now, you're supposed to do two tests at home per week. So seven tests is enough for three weeks, plus as a spare in case you get a void test, which sometimes happens. Okay. Um, so what happens when you do a test? Well, first of all, there is a leaflet in the box, which will tell you everything that you need to know about how to carry out a test. For each test that you do, you will have a little vial of the testing liquid, tiny little vial like that. You will have a little mini test tube, which sits in the cardboard box, put it in like that. You will then squeeze the liquid into it, and that's ready for the test then. In the pack, you will find a swab. You can remove the swab from the pack, and then you will do the test. Okay, do the test down onto the pencils and up the nostrils, uh, as described. Place that in there. You then have to squeeze and roll it around um, and seal it up, uh, give it a shake, and then you drop a few drops onto the actual uh, test thing. It looks a bit like a pregnancy test, and you can see again there is a QR code at the top there. After 30 minutes, no more than 30 minutes, you'll be able to read on that what it says about um, whether the test is positive, negative, or whether it's a void test, okay? Um, and then at the end, there's a little plastic bag which you put all of this equipment in, seal it up, and that goes into your own household waste. It doesn't need any special waste treatment. It's happy to go in the, the household waste, and that's even if it's a positive test, okay? So that's the process there. Now, again, there'll be plenty of videos um, to see how to do this yourselves. Um, and we recommend that you do these tests um, the same as our staff do. Um, from next week, our staff will be doing them at home. and We've told them to do them on a Sunday night and, and again on a Wednesday night. So those are the two days that we're going to be testing our staff uh, from home. Now, we will issue the testing kits for your children, but you can actually do this yourselves as well. Everybody is eligible to, to do this. Um, some of your employers will be able to distribute the testing kits to you. You can go to any test centre um, and they will issue with you with um, two boxes of, uh, of kits for, um, for anyone that's over 18. So if you pass by the Humber Bridge, for example, uh, and the big testing centre there, you can just drop in and, and pick up some test kits. Or you can order them online as well. A quick internet search will, will take you to that link um, and we'll be sending it out in next week's letter as well just seems to me that might as well get the whole family done. Um, and then it becomes a routine for the whole family that you all do together on a Sunday and on a Wednesday. It means you're less likely to forget because everybody's doing it. Um, and then also that peace of mind that comes from being able to test the whole family and know that you're all negative and do that twice a week is certainly something that will give me peace of mind um, so that I know that when I'm visiting my uh, mum or my grandma, you know, I know that I'm negative and that I'm not being a risk to anybody else. So certainly something that we recommend. Lots more details on that to come. And obviously we don't start that till Friday the 19th, uh, but I thought it was worth demonstrating today what happens. Um, we know those uh, tests are going to be really important in that run up to Easter where we're still in this high risk time. Um, so the ones we do in school and the ones we do at home are going to be really, really important. And there is a, a helpline that you can ring. So if you ring 119 from your mobile or your landline, that will give you extra support as well. Um, so when you do those tests, 
you don't need to tell us as a school the outcome of the test unless it is positive. Obviously, if it's positive, you will let the school know straight away uh, and you'll have to go into self-isolation. Uh, but if it's a negative test, there's no need to inform the school uh, and obviously your child can come into school as normal. Um, again, if you've got any more test questions about the testing process itself, put them in the chat. We'll answer them at the end. I can see there's a couple in there already and we'll, we'll come to those later on. Uh, I'm going to pass you back to Jade, who's going to tell you a little bit about how we're going to support our students in school from next week. Jade, you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> As we've already mentioned, there's been an awful lot of support um, and guidance that's gone out to students because we recognise that this is a big transition and we will have a whole host of emotions in our student body as we will in our staff body as well as we all come back together next week. I hope that your child did take advantage of the tutor time um, yesterday afternoon, which was our first kind of touch base and session um, answering students' questions. Um, from what I know about those sessions, they were quite well attended. There were lots and lots of questions that students have got, which we were able to answer quite easy and reassure them about next week. So for the next minute or so, I'm just gonna run through the kind of things that we will have in place for our students and for yourselves over the next couple of weeks as we all come back together. The first thing is around free school meals. I've had quite a number of questions over the last week around free school meals and the arrangements from the eighth, considering that we are not all back on the first day. Now, last week, the free school meal vouchers were issued for the period from the 22nd of February up until the 5th of March. Can I just remind families that these are only valid for a month and they expire on the 26th of March. So please make sure that you have used that voucher before then and it doesn't go to waste. From the 8th of March, if your child is in school, we will resume our normal dining service. So they'll be able to access food in the Grubhub and in Jules as normal normal offer. For those students who are not joining us from the 8th, they may be joining us on the 9th or the 10th, obviously you will have a couple of days um, where you won't be able to access your free school meal in school. Now just like before, then for those students um, we will organise a lunch grab bag which you can collect from reception between 11 and 1 on those days when you are not in school. Now to help us, we would really appreciate it if you could order these in advance, just by contacting our main reception, 01652 632 576, or via our admin email. And if you could request these parcels um, today, that would allow us in plenty of time to make sure they are ready for you. So everybody will get their free school meal next week, but if you are not in school, please take advantage of the grab bag that we can provide for you. In in terms of support next week, I've said that we have made the decision that we will start running a normal timetable from Monday morning. So we will find that class sizes will be quite small so there can be a lot of interaction between teachers and students as we welcome them back. Time for us to check on their well-being, check how lockdown has felt for them, check how they feel being back in school. We understand that looking after our children's mental health and well-being over the next few weeks is critical. And as a staff team, we are all poised and ready to do that. Tutors have a huge role to play. And what your child will find is that tutor times will be a lot less structured over the next week or so. And they'll be having some one-to-one -one conversations with their tutor. It is our mission that every single student in the school has a minimum of one personal conversation with a member of staff about how they feel. And we want every child to make sure that they've had an opportunity to reach out if they need support with regards to anything. So our tutors, that will be their undertaking during tutor time for the next couple of weeks. We've also looked at our curriculum. So every child in the school um, undertakes a PSHE curriculum, um, which is statutory. And we have changed that curriculum very much to respond to this pandemic and how we have all managed to deal um, with the lockdown. So your child will be doing a number of lessons over the next few weeks around just processing those emotions, taking the positives from this experience and also then how we move forward. Now, some of our students are going to need a little bit more support than just that. So there will be a number of break time uh, and after school drop ins for students with key members of staff. And we will launch that with them hopefully this afternoon with dates and times. So every student will be aware of every day 
who they can go and see at break time or at lunch time if they need to access some extra support or they're feeling particularly anxious about something. So as well as their normal tutor and house team, there'll also be another point of contact every single day. We know for some of our students that um, the lockdown will have maybe increased the need for health services. So I'll be pleased to say that our school nurse will be back on site um, on Wednesday for any child that is in school. If your child isn't in school on Wednesday, but you think that they very much do need to access that service, I would ask that you contact me directly and I will see if I can make arrangements for that. We also know that some of our students will have had experiences or they may be worrying about a friend and they might want to let us know that without necessarily sharing that information directly themselves. So we will be launching with students something called the Confide message system. So this will be a way that every single student in school can access from their desktops, they can access the safeguarding team at school and they can let us know if they are worried about anything in the community or anything with their friends and it is anonymous. So that information will go through to the safeguarding team anonymously and it helps us keep everybody a little bit safer. Now we also know that parents, you have had a really difficult time during this lockdown. Um, we, we do not underestimate how challenging it has been for you to be teacher and parent and managing the own effects of lockdown on yourselves. And we know that maybe some of those teenage behaviours have been exacerbated by not being able to access school. So for parents, we're going to run a series over the next two Mondays on the 8th of March and the 15th of March. We're going to run the opportunity for you to connect with some key staff around some very topical issues. So for example, we have one um, with a member of staff who can give some advice on sleep. We have lots of our students that are struggling with regular sleep patterns at the moment. We have some who are struggling in terms of anxiety, some with self-harm, but you can access a professional in school who is best placed to give you advice on some of these key challenges we think that are being experienced in families. And then as always, if as any parent, you feel that you do need to reach out to us, I would urge you to contact your house teams um, for that support in the first instance. Your tutor and your learning manager and the head of house, they are the three key people who are there to look after your child and to make sure that they settle back into school in a really positive way. If you need them for anything, emails, reach out to them and they will be there and they will respond. So I'll hand back to Rich about things that have changed from our autumn term. My um, statutory duty as head teacher is to keep everybody in my school as safe as possible. That's the number one thing on my job description. Um, it's been 80 days since the majority of our students have been in school. Um, things have changed in that time. Uh, and the guidance that's given to schools has changed in that time. The big thing that's changed in that time nationally is the emergence of these um, variations and variants of COVID-19. They are more transmissible. Um, and there's certainly the evidence from the, the new ones like the Brazil variant is that the vaccinations are less effective against them. So the government has become increasingly worried um, about the spread of these new variants. So when it's opening schools up again, it's doing so very, very cautiously because they do know what to, to go into a fourth lockdown. They want that roadmap to continue and for us all to be in a state where we get into June where We've, uh, we've come to the end of, the, of this crisis and hopefully we can be returning to normal. The biggest risk to that is schools open and the R rate goes up again and then we have to put the, uh, the, the plans for the roadmap back. So it's everybody's responsibility and certainly mine as the head teacher to make sure that this school is as safe as possible. The guidance that's given to schools has changed. Before Christmas, the guidance was really clear. A close contact was somebody who had been um, less than two metres away from somebody else for 15 minutes or more. That enabled us to easily identify who the close contacts were for anybody that tested positive. Our seating plans could identify the students. We could talk to the student and we could identify anybody else that might have been near them. And the same for any staff that have been in the vicinity, we could double check. We triangulated that information and generally, within an hour of us being informed um, about a positive test, we had contacted everybody that was a close contact and told them to self-isolate. And as a result, we could contain these numbers 
And most times it was no more than 20 people that were sent home to self-isolate. And we were really, really proud of this. While other, year group, other schools were sending home whole year groups, we were sending home very small numbers following positive tests. The guidance has now changed. When we come back in from next Monday, this guidance about close contacts has changed. This is the government being really, really cautious to make sure that we don't see um, a further spread of the new, uh, more transmissible variants of COVID-19. It now says that a close contact is anybody that has been um, less than a meter away for any length of time at all. You think about what that means in a school, that is an awful lot of people. It also says that the less than two meters for 15 minutes can be cumulative across the whole day. So it doesn't have to be in one sitting, that can be at various different times over the day. So if you meet a friend for five minutes at break time and 10 minutes at lunchtime, then there's your 15 minutes. And so where previously we would have said one five minutes and one 10 minutes, that's fine, it's not the 15 minutes. Now they do come into the definition of close contacts. This is a huge blow for us um, in schools because once we start enforcing this new guidance, once we get any positive tests, we are likely to have to send home far more students to self-isolate. There will be far more students that fit into this definition of close contacts and far more teachers as well. Therefore, we are in a, in a quandary. We want everybody back into school. We want it to be as safe as possible, but we are in this position where the definition of close contacts has changed. We have to therefore do everything in our power to make sure that COVID doesn't come into the school and that we reduce the transmission of COVID when we are in school. So we've been reiterating in our letters about the importance of not coming into school if you have any of the COVID symptoms. And while we are in school, we have to do everything in our power to reduce the risk of transmission. And that brings us on to the issue of face coverings. This is the most difficult decision that any school leader has to take. Nobody likes wearing a face covering. Nobody wants to wear a face covering. Our students do not want to wear face coverings. Our teachers do not want to wear face coverings. Um, trying to teach in a face covering, trying to hear what the students are saying, trying to read their body language and all the interactions, the, the myriad of interactions that happens in any lesson where everybody's wearing face coverings makes our job a million times more difficult. And nobody here is looking forward to that prospect. They are restrictive, they are uncomfortable, um, but we have to follow the government guidance. And for these next 19 days, um, from Monday until we break up for Easter, we have to be ultra, ultra cautious. And I, as the head teacher, have to keep everybody safe. I've had several members of my staff that have contracted COVID over the last year. Three of those have contracted it pretty severely, and two of those are still suffering the long-term effects of long COVID and are still struggling with their health. Uh, in one person's case, it was last March that they contracted it. That's a year ago now, uh, and they are still suffering with their health as a result. So it is my job to make sure that we are as safe as possible and therefore, I have no choice but to follow the guidance that's been put out by the government on face coverings. The guidance is here in this document, schools and coronavirus operational guidance. It's really, really clear. It says, we now recommend in those schools that face coverings should be worn in classrooms or during activities unless social distancing can be maintained. This does not apply in situations where wearing a face covering would impact on the ability to take part in exercise or strenuous activity, for example, in PE lessons. These measures will be in place up until Easter and face visors or shields should not be worn as an alternative to a face covering. Now, you might read that and say, OK, it says recommended in those schools that face coverings should be worn. So it's a recommendation, isn't it? But then elsewhere in the guidance, there's this line under prevention, okay? And it says very clearly, prevention. You must always ensure face coverings are used in recommended circumstances. So that's not a recommendation. That is telling us that we must always ensure that this happens. We don't want to do it, but I have to keep everybody safe. 
So for the next 19 days, we are making face coverings compulsory in our lessons, as well as in our corridors. Break times and lunch times when students are outside the building, they do not have to wear a face covering. But when they are inside the building, they do have to wear a face covering. Unless it's for PE lessons, drama lessons, dance lessons, or certain technology lessons when they're using some of our equipment and they have to wear um, the safety goggles. If you're wearing safety goggles and a mask, there's a risk the safety goggles will um, mist up and that can make using the machine really dangerous. So those are our exceptions. Um, but every other time we will have to wear the masks in school. I can only apologize, but I have to do what the government guidance says and I have to do everything to keep COVID out of school, to make sure that it doesn't transmit in school, and to give the message to every single one of you as parents and every single one of our children that this school is safe to be in. We want everybody to be here, and this is the best way that we can ensure that that happens until Easter. We expect if this um, phase of the roadmap goes well, then there will be different advice that comes out after Easter, and we will be able to roll back from this. But for those 19 days, those are the rules that we've got in school. I recommend that um, each one of our children has a supply of 10 face masks. Um, I would say two for each day. I'd put give them two face masks for each day. Um, those of you who wear a face mask regularly you know that once you've worn it for um, two or three hours, it gets damp from the condensation that comes. So I would recommend that they change that halfway through the day. Uh, and of course, once you've worn it, um, you can't wear it again without it being washed. So once those two for the day, they'll need to go into the wash. I would recommend therefore that 10 is a good number to have. Um, that might sound excessive, but again, we're talking about the safety of everybody involved here. There are of course students who are exempt from wearing masks. Um, in the letter that I sent out yesterday, there's the link to um, who might be exempt and there is the form to fill in. So if uh, your child is exempt from wearing a mask for one of those reasons, that it gives them the guidance, then please complete that form by the end of today. Uh, and then we've got our, our list of those students that are exempt. We'll give them a little um, green pin badge to wear on their lapels. Uh, and then that means nobody will be questioning them or sanctioning them. Because that is the other bit, because we're having to make it compulsory. Then like any, any piece of equipment or uniform, if it's compulsory and they're not wearing it, then they do face a sanction. That is what will happen in school for these next 19 days. Jade, back to you to just to talk about briefly our other infection control. Thank you. As a school, we are really proud of our infection control um, record for the, for the autumn term and before. Um, we have had no cases of in-school transmission because we have been consistently doing the things that we know keep our students and staff safe. But after a period away from school, uh, we would ask all parents to just make sure that you are going through these key things with students and reminding them that now more than ever, it is really important that every time consistently we keep to these measures. Now, every student should sanitise their hands on the way in. There are lots of sanitising stations on tables, onto the walls, by every entrance into school. So we recommend that every student sanitises their hands as soon as they come through our gates in the morning. And there are always lots of staff there um, ready to remind students. But we would urge parents and students to think about taking, you've got to take some responsibility for doing these things yourself. Okay, my staff are out there to remind, but it can be easy to miss somebody. Students have got to recognise the importance of doing these things for themselves, for you as their families at home, and for their friends and staff within school. So we always sanitise when we come into the building. We always wear our face masks as soon as we enter. And when we head to our classrooms, we are expected to sanitise our hands again. So we are back to our normal control systems of on entry and exit to a classroom, you will be expected to sanitise your hands. Now there was an increasing number of students with their own hand sanitizer um, in the autumn term and that is absolutely fine. But we expect every child when they have left the room to have their hands sanitised. When they reach the next classroom, we will sanitise again as they enter. Okay, it can be very easy, even in a short distance, um, to touch a handrail and um, to pick up a bag. So we do 
exit and entry to the next classroom. And we do not believe that is too onerous. We know that hand sanitizer only works for about four or five times before really it is having very little impact. So we would urge every student to make sure that at break times and lunch times, they take the opportunity to get into the, the bathrooms, wash their hands for at least 20 seconds with hot water and soap. That is the best defense against transmission of this virus. So they need to make sure as well as the hand sanitizer, they are taking time to wash their hands with soap and hot water during the day. We will also be making sure that every student and member of staff, we are in really good routines now about wiping down tables and equipment at the end of every session. So at the end of every lesson, every table in the classroom is wiped down uh, and disposed of, ready for the next class to come in. Now, one of the parents' biggest concerns is around infection control on the buses, which do present a big challenge to us as schools who do not manage the school buses. We have taken every possible precaution that we can do and we've issued guidance, but we are not on those buses and we do not manage them. So we do feel some of your frustrations and we need a collective support from parents of all the students that access those to make sure that they are safe. We do insist that every one of our students puts on their face mask and we do enforce that as staff, the senior team are out there every evening and we do check the buses for face masks before they leave the school site. But children being children, as soon as they've left the school site and there is no supervision, we are relying on their personal responsibility to keep that mask on until they reach their destination. We have done um, seating plans for the buses. So as parents, can you check that your child does know where they are sitting on the bus? And if they're unsure, then reach out to myself and Mr Barton uh, and we will help your child remember which seat they are sitting on. And like in the autumn term, your child must only sit on that seat. And if there are any problems on the buses, there are always at least five to six staff outside uh, when the buses arrive um, and when they're here to pick up in the evenings. And we are here to support your child. But they must keep the mask on. They must stay in their allocated seat. We've talked about face coverings which leads me on to breaks and lunch times. Now we are lucky as a school that we have always worked with a stagger for both of those social times. And our infection control strategy was as soon as a child has eaten, we would try and encourage them to leave the building outside and get some fresh air. Never has that been more important than now because they will need to take off their face mask. So as well as being good for them to be out in the fresh air, when they are outside, as long as they are two meters away from their friends, then they can remove their face mask and we would encourage them to do so. We do appreciate how restrictive face coverings can feel. So please, again, as parents, just reiterate to your child, we understand you will want to take that face covering off, but just make sure you are not huddled too closely with your friends. Make sure there is a bit of distance. We are so lucky at Baysgav to have such an extensive site. We are certainly not short of space, outside space, for our students to spread out in. So as long as all of our students and staff, we are consistently following those guidelines, we are very, very hopeful that we can manage to keep such a good track record as we had in the autumn. It's every person in this building taking responsibility for just doing those few things well, consistently, every time. And I thank you for parents for reiterating those messages. Back yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Um, we're pretty much at the end there now. I'm sure that you, um, like me, when, when we saw the roadmap and we saw the way out, it's just it's given us that hope, that hope for um, a good summer this year. And, um, and, and the thing is, the, the government's chief medical advisor said, just don't blow it now. And that's why we have to be careful. We have to be cautious. We have to really follow the guidance for this period of the, the first, if you like, opening up of society uh, with schools reopening. Um, and that's where we need your support. We need to act together as a community. We all need to back each other to make sure that we're as safe as possible to get through stage one. And then we can go on and we can get our um, pubs open outdoors over Easter. And then we can look forward to the 21st of June and um, things like the European uh, Championships and the Olympics happening in the summer. It will be uh, it will be a really exciting time. So tough times now for these next 19 days. And I know we'll all find it difficult. Um, but when we get to the summer, 
um, I think it will be absolutely brilliant for everybody. So we massively appreciate your support and thank you so much for tuning in today, tonight, this afternoon, whenever you get the chance to, uh, to watch the video. Jade, I think we've only had the, the one question, which is about accessing the, um, the video that Mr. Barton has produced about the testing centre. Uh, and Jade, do you want to just repeat the, uh, the yeah. response you've given in the chat? Um, so the video, the, the tutor PowerPoint that goes out to all students, and, and this is something that we do whether we are in school or we are not, um, has all the key messages in. I would really urge a parent to sit down with your child over the weekend and go through that because a lot there's a lot of information about just preparing sort of psychologically and organisationally ready for coming back to school. The video is linked into that tutor PowerPoint, so you can access it straight from there. Um, it will also be on our website, but the easiest way is to access it through that tutor PowerPoint. Um, and there are lots of things in there for students to kind of do in preparation. It's a, a very useful document for them to have. And they should have that all on their email. If your child can't find it for whatever reason, then reach out to your tutor, but you could also find it on our website as well. That's lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care and uh, just reiterate that message. We cannot wait to see your children next week. Um, and uh, yeah, we love, love this school when it's open to everybody as it will be. And can't wait for next Thursday when we've got a thousand people on this site and school is as it should be, a very full, vibrant, buzzing place. So thank you very much and take care. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.